So I'm told that the, there is an employer, there is an employer who needs to hire 10 workers, okay? needs to hire 10 workers. There are equal numbers of good workers and bad workers in the population. So you have good and you have bad workers, two kinds of workers. Uh, the employer cannot distinguish between good workers and bad workers. Purely good workers will have to be distinguished from bad workers in a certain way. Here they are distinguished by their productivity. Good workers have a productivity of 10 widgets per hour. They produce 10 widgets per hour. And bad workers have a productivity of 5 widgets per hour. Uh, the employer's profit margin per widget, profit uh, revenue minus the cost of raw materials is P. This is the profit margin per widget. Okay, C. Now, good workers, if they don't work for this employer, they could work elsewhere, in which case they will receive a uh, wage of W. This is their so-called reservation wage. If they don't work for this particular employer, they could work elsewhere, and elsewhere they will be paid WG. Bad workers, similarly, if they don't work for this particular employer, they could work elsewhere, and they could earn a wage of WB. WG surely is greater than WB. Okay, what good workers can earn elsewhere uh, is higher than what bad workers can earn elsewhere. Now, our employer in this question is determining between two kinds of payment schemes, wage schemes. The first scheme, the first sort of payment scheme that he has in mind consists of paying all workers a fixed wage of S. Notice I said all workers. Why? Because the employer cannot distinguish between good and bad workers. If he is to make a wage payment, that must be the same for both workers. Okay? S. The alternative payment scheme that the employer is considering is, is a piece rate scheme, piece rate scheme, or a commission based scheme, however you want to call it, a wage labor scheme. It consists of a smaller fixed salary, SL, SL is smaller than S, but it also consists of a variable component of the wage, which is a, a fraction of the profit, 15% of the profit margin per widget that is produced by the worker. Okay, so this is a wage scheme. This is an alternative wage scheme. The employer is deciding between these two wage schemes. These two wage schemes. Now, my first question, just, just by looking at the setup of the question, even before we start answering the question, is to ask you, do you think this is a principal agent problem? And the answer is no. Why? Because in any principal agent problem, the point about the problem is for the principal to determine a wage level such that the employer, the, sorry, the employee will choose to put in high effort or low effort. That's the point of the principal agent problem. In a principal agent problem, the employee always has a choice between an effort level, a high effort level and a low effort level, or some effort level. Here, as the question is set up, the employee has no choice between effort level, right? He is not choosing a level of effort. He is either a good employee or a bad employee. There are two kinds of employees. He is not choosing a level of effort. Therefore, the problem, even though it is a problem about setting an optimal wage scheme, is not a problem that is a principal agent problem. We must be able to see this first. Okay? Just because I am setting a wage does not make a problem a principal agent problem. Okay? As long as the employee has no choice between which effort level to choose, after accepting the wage scheme, it is not a principal agent problem. Okay? Understand that. Okay. Now, so having said that, let's look at the first question. The first question requires you to uh, state, in the fixed wage scheme, clearly every worker will get S dollars per hour. Correct? Every worker will get S dollars per hour. The employer is paying S dollars per hour, and every worker will get S dollars per hour. The question is, how much will good workers and bad workers get under the peace rate scheme? You have to uh, understand something very clearly. When the employer hires someone and he offers this wage scheme, the scheme remains the same for everyone. Right? You might be a good worker, he might be a bad worker. When you come to me, I say this is your scheme. The scheme remains the same for everyone. And that has to be the case because the employer cannot distinguish between good and bad. However, if good workers accept this scheme, the question is asking you how 
much will they receive? If bad workers accept this scheme, how much will they receive? The distinction is very, very important conceptually. It is not that the employer is paying different amounts. He is distinguishing, oh, you are a good worker, this is how much I am paying you, you are a bad worker, here is what you will get. That's not what I am doing. I am offering you a scheme, this scheme, same for all workers. But if good workers accept this scheme, they will get a different payment from bad workers. Why? Because this N, the number of widgets they produce per hour will be different. That's the idea. The number of widgets they produce per hour will be different. So, for example, if good workers accept this scheme, I'm not sure whether they will accept or not, but if they do accept this scheme, how much do they stand to make? They will make SL plus 0.15 profit margin C. How many widgets will they produce per hour? They will produce 10 widgets. Okay, specified in the question. So, if good workers accept this scheme, they will make SL plus 1.5. On the other hand, if bad workers accept this scheme, the same scheme, same scheme, the scheme has to be same. Employer cannot distinguish whether you are good or bad. Then bad workers will receive SL, which is common to uh, both good and bad workers. The percentage of profit is also common. Profit margin is common. But notice, bad workers can only produce 5 widgets per hour. Therefore, their payment will be the, the, the amount they receive if they accept this payment scheme will be 0.75. They will automatically receive a lower wage compared to the good workers if they accept the payment scheme. Okay? If they accept the okay. uh, This is the first part of the question. This is the payment good workers will receive. This is the payment bad workers will receive. Next part of the question. Under the fixed wage scheme, fixed wage scheme, this is the fixed wage scheme, this is the fee scheme. Under the fixed wage scheme, what is the minimum salary the employer needs to pay if he wants to attract good workers? Okay, I want good workers to work for me. What is the minimum salary? This is a constant salary. What is the minimum salary I need to pay? Clearly, the minimum salary I need to pay to get a good quality worker to apply to work for me must be higher than what the good quality worker can earn elsewhere. If it is lower than this, the good quality worker will not even apply to work for me. That's the idea. Therefore, in order to hire a good quality worker, S, S must be greater than or equal to W. Okay, this is, so the minimum I have to pay, this condition must be satisfied for good quality workers to apply to work for me. Therefore, the minimum I need to pay has to be W. This is the minimum. Okay, this is the minimum. And what is the minimum I need to pay? Ah, okay. So there is a second part to the question. The question asks you, okay, suppose you pay this minimum. Suppose you pay this minimum. Uh, how many good quality workers will you hire? You pay this minimum, which means good quality workers will apply to work for you. How many good quality workers will you hire? Remember, I need 10 employees. I need 10 employees. And there are equal number of good and bad workers in this society. The question tells me that. So your job to answer this particular part of the question is to determine whether at this wage, there is a separating equilibrium or there is a pooling equilibrium. In other words, I mean, at this wage, will only good quality workers apply to work for you or bad quality workers will also apply to work for you. If both of them are going to apply at this wage, then you will have a pooling equilibrium. Okay? If only good quality workers will apply to work for you at this wage, then you will have a separating equilibrium. That's the idea. So at WG, what do you have? Pooling or separating equilibrium? Clearly pooling. Why? Bad quality workers, if they work elsewhere, can earn WB, which is lower than WG. Now I am offering a fixed salary of WG. Therefore, both good quality and bad quality workers will apply to work for you. Apply to work for you. And you cannot distinguish, you cannot just hire good quality workers because you cannot distinguish whether a worker is a good quality or a bad quality. Which means both qualities of workers will apply to work for you. What will be the expected? On average, how many of them will be good quality workers? 
out of 10, there, there is a probability that half, for any worker, there is a probability that he is a good quality worker is half. That's the probability. So out of 10 workers, how many workers will be good quality workers? Half times 10, which is 5. This is the number of good quality workers you will expect to find. So you offer this fixed wage scheme, both good quality and bad quality workers will apply, will apply, because this wage uh, establishes a pooling equilibrium. Therefore, the number on average of good quality workers you will hire is fine. Okay, fine. Clear, yeah, guys? Now, okay, anytime we discuss questions, more, as I told you before, I can change the questions in ways that you will not even be able to compare solution procedures here with solution procedures in other questions. The important thing to focus on is the logic behind solving it. Okay, at this wage, in order to determine uh, how many good quality workers I will have, I first have to determine who is going to apply. Will everyone apply or only one quality of worker apply? That's your first okay. Alright. The next part of the question asks me this. What will be the employer's net profit, net profit, if I do offer this wage? Okay? If I offer this wage, what will be the employer's net profit? Employer's net profit. Okay. How do I find that out? I know that if I offer this wage, I will have five good quality workers. I will also have five bad quality workers. I need ten workers. Okay, I'll have five good quality and five bad quality. The five good quality workers that I have will produce five times ten widgets per hour. Their productivity is ten. The five bad quality workers that I have will produce five times five widgets per hour. Therefore, the total number of widgets my ten workers will produce is this. My profit margin per widget is T. Minus, uh, this is important, anytime you are considering a wage scheme, please do not forget to subtract off your wage bill. This is my profit on the goods I sell. But there is a wage bill to be taken into account. In order to, in order to generate this profit, I need to be hiring workers and paying them money. Okay, I have to subtract that from my profit. Okay? So therefore, how many workers am I hiring? Ten workers. Five good, five bad, but that doesn't matter. Everyone is getting paid WG. Every one of them is getting paid WG. Therefore, minus 10 WG, which is my wage bill. Therefore, my expected profit, if I pay them a fixed salary of this, is 50.75 P minus 10 W. Okay? So the next 
part of the question asks you, uh, what is the employer's expected net profit when you offer a fixed salary W? Same idea as before, I have 10 workers now, all bad, together they will produce 50 widgets. The profit margin per widget is P, profit margin per widget is P, minus the wage bill again. Now every worker is getting paid WP, there are 10 workers, my total wage bill is 10 WP. 10 WP. Okay, 10 WP. Therefore, I have 50 P minus 10 WP. This is my expected profit if I don't get whether the workers are good quality or bad quality. This is my expected profit. Uh, the next part of the question, part E asks you, under what condition will you not care whether your workers are good or bad? This is the expected profit. If you don't care whether your workers are good or bad, therefore you will pay them this, right? And this will be your expected profit. This is the expected profit when, this is the expected profit when you care about whether you are when you want good quality workers to apply to work for you, then you have to pay this. You cannot guarantee, you cannot guarantee that all workers will be good, but at least five of them will be good. Okay, so you care about whether your workers are good or bad. And in that case, this will be your expected work. Now, before I look at the next question, let me ask you, is there any value of S, any value at all of this fixed salary, at which I can generate a separating equilibrium such that only good quality workers will apply to work from. Is there any value of S such that only good quality workers will apply to work from? No, clearly no. Any, to get good quality workers, I have to offer WG or more. But whenever I apply to offer WG or more, the bad quality workers will also apply. It is impossible to generate a separating equilibrium with this PC, where only good quality workers are. Okay, you should be able to see that. Okay, come back to the question. Our next part requires me to state the condition, state the condition under which the employer will care, or sorry, under which the employer will not care whether his workers are of good quality or bad quality. Okay. Uh, the conditions under which the employer is okay with all bad quality workers. And what is that condition? Clearly, in order for the employer to be okay with all bad quality workers, the expected profit from that <coughs> must be greater than the expected profit from this. If this is higher than this, I am okay with all bad quality workers. Greater than or equal. And you see there is a possibility that might happen. Why? If I get some bad quality, uh, good quality and some bad quality workers, my revenue is higher as it were. My gross profit is higher, 75p compared to 50p here. But look at my wage bill. My wage bill is also higher. Wage bill is also higher. So if the difference in wage more than offsets the difference in revenue, then I will be okay with having only bad quality workers. If I have to pay a lot more to get a good quality worker and I can't generate enough revenue from those good quality workers, I don't want that. I want bad quality workers. I am okay with bad quality workers. That's the logic. So in order for an employer uh, to be okay with hiring only bad quality workers, the expected profit from hiring only bad quality workers, which is 50p minus 10 WB, must be greater than or equal to 75p minus 10 WB. And you can uh, rewrite this as 10 WB minus WB. This is the difference you have to pay to hire, to have the possibility, to have the chance of hiring a good quality worker. They, it should be greater than or equal to uh, the difference in revenue from hiring some good quality workers, 50 people, which is 20. That's the idea. This condition must be satisfied. And it is an intuitive condition. Okay, and keep that condition in mind always. So, it is, the general principle we are talking about here is that just because a good quality worker generates greater revenue, 
does not mean that, does not imply that I will want a good quality. We must generate uh, more than sufficiently higher revenue. Okay? Just generating more revenue is not good enough. Okay? That's the idea. Okay, that's part E of the equation. Part F. Uh, oh, that's part F of the equation. Okay, this is F. This is E. Part D. Uh, now, so I have looked at the fixed rate scheme. I have looked at two kinds of uh, possibilities. I can use the fixed rate scheme to get both good and bad quality workers, or I can use the fixed rate scheme to get only bad quality workers. Now, I want to focus on the fixed rate scheme. SL plus 0 0.15 profit margin times the number of widgets produced. This is the fixed rate scheme. Uh, the first question asks you, for which values of SL, for which values of SL will good qu uh, quality workers apply to work for you? Now notice something, understand the question. I want to know for which values of SL in this payment scheme will good quality workers apply to work for you? Okay. Now notice, this payment scheme looks variable, right? It looks variable because of the number n in total. <coughs> Depending on how many widgets you produce, you will get uh, a different wage, different wage. If you produce more widgets, you will get a more wage, a higher wage, right? But from the point of view of good quality workers, they already know the number of widgets they can produce per hour, right? They know. They know that they can produce 10 widgets per hour. So even though this pay scale, this pay scheme looks variable, for good quality workers, it is a constant. They know exactly how much they will get if they accept this offer. And we have determined that before, SL plus 0.15P, good quality workers produce 10 widgets, therefore SL plus 1.5P. This is what their payment will be. This is a constant. Good quality workers know if they accept this fee, they will get this much money. This is a constant. This is a constant from the point of view of good quality workers. It is also a constant from the point of view of bad uh, from the employer. The employer knows if it is a good quality worker, I will have to pay him this much money. Okay, everyone knows how productive good quality workers are. Now, in order for good quality workers to accept, to apply to work for this firm, which is paying them a piece rate scheme like this, the payment they receive must be greater than the payment they can get elsewhere. Clearly, the payment they receive under this scheme must be greater than the payment they receive elsewhere. If that condition is satisfied, good quality workers will apply to work for From here, I can determine a value of SL. <coughs> SL must be greater than or equal to WG minus 1.5. Okay. Now let us do the same thing for bad quality workers. Under uh, what condition will a bad quality worker apply to work for this firm? A firm which is paying a piece rate scheme like this. The same idea applies. The bad quality worker, when he receives this offer, this pay scheme, he exactly knows, he knows exactly how much he will be paid if he accepts the offer. Why? Because he knows how many widgets he will produce. Therefore, for a bad quality worker, we have already established this. The total payment he expects to receive by accepting this wage scheme is SL plus 0 0.75. Okay? 0 0.15 times 5 is 0 0.75. And that must be greater than or equal to W. If that condition is satisfied, bad quality workers will apply. And you can use that inequality to determine what SL must be. Ultimately, the question is asking you for what, uh, what values of SL will bad quality workers apply or what values of SL will good quality workers apply. So SL, to get bad quality workers to apply, should be 0 0.75. Got it. If SL is greater than or equal to this, then bad quality workers will apply. If SL is greater than or equal to this, then good quality workers can apply. Right. Okay. Now, the next part of the question gives you some values to work with. 
the Celsius, the WG is equal to 4, uh, WB is equal to 3, P, P is equal to 2. Profit margin is equal to 2. The reservation wage of the bad quality, a uh, good quality worker is 4. That for the bad quality worker is 3. That is what they can get elsewhere. Given this, given these values, uh, you are asked, is it possible to set a value of SL such that only good quality workers will apply? In other words, I could have asked you, is it possible to set a value of SL such that there is a separating equilibrium? Only good quality workers will apply to work for the firm. Only good quality workers will apply to work for uh, Let us look at that now. Uh, let me substitute the values in. This, this, this becomes WG is, uh, WB is 3, P is 2, so 3 minus 0.75 times 1.5, SL must be greater than or equal to 1.5. If SL is greater than or equal to 1.5, then bad quality workers will apply. Let me do that here. Uh, WG is 4, 1.5. Uh, SL is greater than or equal to 1, then good quality workers will apply. Okay, I want you to pause for a moment to see the implications. Yeah, the, the mathematics is simple. The story behind the mathematics. That's the important part. Okay. I am saying here something strange, something that should appear to you as strange. Good quality workers, to get good quality workers, to apply for me, I need to pay them a fixed component of only greater than 1. For bad quality workers, to get them to apply for me, apply to work for me, I need to pay them a fixed component that is 1 greater than 1.5. Straight. It looks like bad quality workers need to be paid more in fixed terms compared to good quality workers. Straight, right? How do you reconcile this? What is the next thing? Surely this looks odd to you. Say that again. Sorry. Ah, explain it. Correct. So the idea is, this is just the fixed component, right? And the total payment must be greater than WG, correct? For good quality workers. But good quality workers know they are good quality workers. They know that what their productivity is. It's quite high, 10 widgets per hour. So they know that if they accept this scheme, the variable component there, this 1.5p, will be quite high for them. Quite high for them. Therefore, they are prepared to accept a lower pay salary. They know that they can get 10. This, this is very high for them. That's the idea. Therefore, but bad quality workers know that their pay under the peace rate will be low. So in order for them to accept this, the fixed component must be higher. That's the idea. That's the idea. Now, that is why, another thing before I go on to look at looking at the question in general. Notice what I am trying to do. In this question, uh, by the peace rate scheme, I am trying to produce a separating equilibrium by screening, by screening good quality and bad quality workers. Remember the insurance problem? where the insurance company offered two contracts in a menu of insurance contracts. One was a full premium contract, a full cover high premium contract, another was a partial cover low premium contract. And I wanted to produce a separating equilibrium by making the high risk guys want this contract and the low risk guys want this contract. Self-select themselves. I wanted them to self-select themselves into each of the kinds of contracts. Right? Here, the, 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 the peace rate scheme works in a similar manner. If I offer the peace rate scheme to workers, it is possible, it is possible to use that peace rate scheme as a self-selection screening device such that only good quality workers will work for you, bad quality workers won't even apply. So you will, you will be certain whenever a worker applies to you that he is a good quality. The idea behind this device and that uh, insurance menu device is the same. 
I am trying to produce, I am trying to get a self-selection constraint involved in separating the workers into good quality and bad quality. I want to see what they do and depending on what they do, whether they apply to me or not, I will establish their separating equilibrium. I would have acquired information whether they are good quality or bad quality. That's the idea. Okay? A similar sort of uh, logic going on. Now let's see. So good quality workers will apply to me as long as SL is greater than 1. 1. Bad quality workers will apply to me as long as SL is greater than 1.5. Here bad quality workers will apply. Will good quality workers also apply here? Of course. They will apply for anything greater than 1. Okay. So here, if you set your SL here, you will have a pooling equilibrium. Both good quality and bad quality workers will apply here. If SL is greater than 1.5. If SL is less than 1, you will also have a pooling equilibrium. No one will apply to work for you. Neither good quality nor bad quality worker will apply. If SL is anywhere in between 1 and 1.5, you will have a separating equilibrium. Only good quality workers will apply for you. No bad quality workers. Okay? So it is possible to set an set a value of SL such that you will get a separating equilibrium where only good quality workers will apply to work. And if you do set that value of SL somewhere, anywhere in between here, you have, by offering this wage scheme, made it possible for yourself to screen workers into good quality and bad quality. Anyone who applies to you automatically is a good quality worker. You know that. You know that. That's the idea. It's a screening device. That's why you must be able to see what device is a screening device. Alright, now. Uh, the next part of the question asks you, for the parameter values mentioned above, these parameter values, which is the profit maximizing wage scheme? <coughs> which would the employer want? And to answer that question, notice two things. The employer here has a choice really between four different wage schemes. What are the four schemes? Broadly speaking, he has a fixed rate scheme S and he has an SL plus 1.5 PN, a P rate scheme. But within S, within the fixed rate scheme, there are two different values of S he has to consider. If he wants both good quality and bad quality workers, S star must be set at WG. This is one particular wage scheme. If he doesn't care about which quality of workers he wants, S star must be set at WB. This is another wage scheme. We have seen this before. Now, here, here. If he wants under this also, there are two possibilities. Two possibilities. If he wants only good quality workers, the way scheme that he should offer is SL star plus 1.5 PN. This is what he should offer. Okay, the choice is between getting only good quality workers, no one at all, or bad quality and good quality. Okay, good. So the other possibility is to choose SL star where I want both, let's call it double star, plus 1.5 PN. This corresponds to a separating equilibrium only good. This corresponds to a pooling equilibrium good plus bad. Okay, there are two possibilities. In order to determine what is the profit maximizing scheme, these, are, these values I have determined, I have to determine this. Tell me, if I only want good quality workers, I know that I can set SL anywhere between 1 and 1.5. What should I set the value of SL? 1. one. Really? I can give you more, I can give you more, but why should I? It will reduce my profit as an employer. This is good enough, this is good enough. So 1 plus 1.5 PN. And if I don't care about whether the workers applying to me are good or bad, what is the value of SL 
double star I should say? 1.5. Nothing more than that. 1.5. 1.5. Okay. I, I could have said here also, but why should I? I am reducing my own profit by giving you a weight higher than what I need to do. So this will be 1.5. Got it. This is one particular piece rate scheme. This is another particular piece rate. Okay. Now all you need to do, you have already determined the profits under this scheme from the previous part of the question. We have already determined which part of the question, this part of the question. We have looked at the profit, 75p minus 10w. We have found out the profit from setting a fixed wage is equal to wb. 50p minus 10wb. You have got this here and got this here. All you need to do is to uh, put in these parameter values and find a number here. Find a number here. Okay? Find the number here. Now look here. I'll give you, I'll, uh, I'll tell you this for, uh, give you the profit function, I will not substitute the numbers, I'll leave it for you. How do I determine the profit function? What will be my expected profit if I offer this? Notice, if I offer this, I will produce a separating equilibrium, only good. I'll get 10 good quality workers. Each good quality worker produces 10 widgets per hour. The total number of widgets is this. My profit margin per widget is P. This is my total gross profit minus the wage bill, minus the wage bill. How much is the wage bill? I have 10 good quality workers, 10 times. How much am I paying them? I am paying them this, but this means what? 1 plus 1.5 P times 10. Good quality workers will produce 10 widgets per hour. So the wage bill is 1 plus 1.5 times P times 10. Got it. This is my expected profit under this thing. Okay? This is my expected profit under this thing. Uh, finally, what is the expected profit under this wage scheme? Notice, this is a wage scheme in which you have a pooling equilibrium. Both bad quality and good quality workers will apply. You can't distinguish between worker qualities. Therefore, on average, how many good quality workers will you get? Five. You need 10 people, workers are as likely to be good or bad, therefore on average you will get 5 good quality workers here and 5 bad quality workers here. Okay, that's the idea. Therefore, what will your profit be? Your profit can be expressed like this. 5 good quality workers, right? They will produce these many widgets. 5 bad quality workers, right? They will produce these many widgets. The total number of widgets you will produce is this. The profit margin is P. This will be your gross profit. Minus the wage bill. The five good quality workers have to be paid 1.5 plus 1.5 P times N is 10 for them. This is how much you have to pay the five good quality workers. The five bad quality workers, you have to pay them five bad quality workers. 1.5, this is the same for good and bad quality, but the variable component is this. 1.5 times P, but they are only producing 5 widgets per hour. That's okay, This is the expected profit for this video. So substitute the values of P, W, B and W, G in each of them and find out the value of profit for which, uh, find out uh, which is the profit maximizing scheme. Which scheme gives you the highest profit. So one interesting thing to note, uh, because I can ask you a question like this in the exam also, and it change it a bit, that, that uh, whenever a person chooses a commission-based payment scheme, for example, people who decide to work as insurance agents, people who decide to work as real estate agents, people who uh, work to decide as sales agents, what can you say? What is the implication here for people like that? People who choose to work as sales agents or insurance agents or as uh, real estate agents, what can you say about them based on the, what the model we are discussing? What can you say about such people? Ah, they know that they are good quality. That's why they are accepting a piece rate scheme. Anyone who accepts a commission based schema, only does so because he is confident 
that his variable pay will be quite high. That's the idea. That's the idea. So when when firms cannot, when I am hiring a sales worker, sales worker is not going to spend his time in the office. He will be out in the field. So I don't know whether he is good quality or bad quality. I can't constantly monitor him, right? So I offer him a commission based scheme, which allows me to screen if he is prepared to accept that commission based scheme. He is only he is he is telling me I am screening him by offering a commission based scheme that I, he is a good quality worker. Anyone who accepts a commission based scheme in the implications of this model is a good quality worker. That's the, idea. That's the idea. That's why firms use commission based schemes. Okay. Also for another reason which we will see in another question later, but in this particular model, commission based schemes are used as screening devices. To screen the worker for, for, for good quality or bad quality. Okay. Questions guys?